It's almost time for Amazon's second annual Prime Day sale. The online giant retailer is referring to July 12th as the biggest Amazon event ever. Prime Day, right? So joining us now to give us some insight on the matter is Jeremy Kaplan. He is editor-in-chief over at digitaltrends.com. Jeremy, this is the second of its event, second kind of its event here. It did it last year to celebrate its anniversary, 20 years. How does it differ this year from what it was last year? Well, one of the complaints that we saw last year at this shopping event was that there was supply issues. Amazon put on sale a certain package of toilet paper or a tripod or whatever it was. They didn't have enough to sell. I guess they didn't really realize the incredible demand, which is kind of surprising considering the volume that this company does. You would think that they would anticipate that. So going into this particular Prime event, Amazon said that they've got great supply and they really plan on addressing that particular issue. Now it's also focusing here on the Amazon Prime service as well, right? They're trying to sell that product out there. How much does the Prime upsell, which is this two-day shipping concept, really factor into what they're trying to do here? I think that that's really the heart of what Prime is all about. So consider that fact. If you're going to shop on Prime Day, you need a Prime account. You can get a free account for 30 days and then you have to sign up for $99. And with that account comes access to all of the other stuff that Amazon does. And they do tons of stuff. Their tentacles are everywhere. So there's video, there's TV, there's music. So last year, here's an interesting fact for you. Last year, Amazon's streaming music service grew threefold over the year before. And I think that a lot of that is because of Prime. People have access to it. Is it the best streaming music service? No. But it comes along with that account. You might as well just use it. A lot of people are doing that with these other services. Gotcha. So, so that that obviously factors in. It's it's the get in the foot door in the door concept here. You get them in, and then you sell them all the other kind of stuff as well. So, let's talk about Prime Day itself. Then, are the deals really all that fantastic? We talked about the idea, like you said, there are grumblings that maybe the, even the products that they put out there weren't exactly ones that all customers wanted. What's your opinion this time around? Do you think they're going to make those adjustments and put different types of products out there? Yeah, so uh, people compare this a lot to Black Friday. Black Friday is very much a consumer technology shopping event. Um, and that's the kind of thing that gets people really, really excited, getting a discount on a new television set. If it's just uh, toilet paper or toothbrushes or something like that, which is a, a, the bulk of the stuff that Amazon sells, is just ordinary household items, that's not necessarily going to get people as excited. But on the other hand, Americans do love a sale. Any opportunity to save some money. So if I can get a bulk pack of toothbrushes and stick them in a drawer and I can save three or four dollars on that, sure, I'm probably going to go do that. If they have enough supplies, people will get excited about that. They will sell an awful lot of stuff, um, which is really the ultimate goal here. They, they do great volume on a lot of things. So I, I would look for big sales coming up. Amazon is the biggest online retailer. The biggest bricks and mortar retailer is Walmart, and they've been trying to jockey for, for some kind of a position here as a competitor to Amazon and even to their prime service. How do the two compare? Is it a fair comparison? We know that Walmart is trying to do this two-day unlimited shipping in certain markets. Yeah, it, it's interesting, and it's cheaper, too. The Walmart service is $49 versus $99. So on the one hand, if you're talking just about shipping, just about getting products quickly, I would rather have a $50 service than a $100 service. But the key to Amazon is it really is a fantastic deal. Uh, for $100, you get access to everything. The, the video streaming service is a wonderful service, and for that same $99, you get access to that. And you can, what I find, I, I'm a subscriber, I've been a subscriber for years now, I find that I check to see if the video is there rather than going through Netflix or Hulu or my cable box or wherever else I might go for a video, just because I have access. So I find myself using Amazon services solely because I have this Prime account. It is a really insidious way of, of worming its way into your life. That said, it's also a really great deal, so it's hard to complain about it. All right, so let's kind of talk a little bit about the environment that these guys operate. When you're as successful as they are and you're the tech giant out there, you got a bullseye on your back, including from Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, who accused giant technology companies like Amazon or a Google or an Apple of using their size to quote unquote snuff out the competition. You call her points perhaps a little preposterous. Why? Yeah, it, it's an interesting comment that Warren is making. On the one hand, there is a challenge from a lot of these companies which do try to do what Amazon is doing. They, they want to worm their way into your life and take over everything. You see the exact same thing with Apple, where its whole plan is to have an ecosystem and you don't ever want to leave the Apple ecosystem. That said, the point that Warren was making was kind of silly. She noted that Apple's streaming music service is stifling competition. Uh, Spotify may complain about it, but Spotify is a giant in this space. They are not 
fighting Apple here. She mentioned uh, the Kindle service, and it's true. The, the Kindle service is the dominant platform for books, and there, there isn't a lot of competition there. However, Apple is the one that lost a $400 million lawsuit and is paying the booksellers a whole bunch of money there. So I think that she has an interesting point, but when you drill down to the specifics that she made, they weren't perhaps the correct ones. All right, so it sounds like this whole story here with Amazon, Amazon Prime Day, and everything else is just a, a larger a part of the narrative, so to speak, for large cap technology and what it's doing to our lives. Thank you so much, Jeremy Kaplan, for joining us there. Jeremy Kaplan, the editor-in-chief of digitaltrends.com, and thanks for watching. I'm Dominic Chu. Have a great day. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.